Um, welcome, this is Shelley Loveless from Real Fernando Farm, and this is part of the 2020 Wool Festival, uh, Taos Wool Festival virtual demonstration. And today I'm going to show you how to pluck a bunny. And so anyway, just to give you some idea of the equipment I'll be using, um, these are papaya enzyme tablets. And I usually give them to rabbits after I pluck them because they continue grooming themselves and they swallow their hair. And this keeps um, the hair going through their body because they can't throw it up like a cat. And then I always keep Bactine in case I should accidentally nick a rabbit or uh, have a problem like that. So anyway, those are things to just have around. And my basic, and also you can use uh, uh, one of these uh, styptic pencils or cornstarch if you should cut a toenail too short and they bleed a lot it's not going to kill your bunny you'll feel terrible but it's it, it does happen and my basic tools are my favorite toenail clippers just regular toenail clippers you can use whatever equipment you feel best using but I find that these are the cheapest and the best. And I usually trim toenails before I start grooming. And a pair of scissors. Now these are Fisker scissors, and they're my favorite, these little Fisker scissors that have a spring to them, you unlock them, and, and you can use them very easily. They're, they're easy on your wrist. And these um, also, you can get uh, a sharpener for them, a Fisker sharpener, and they last for years and years. Um, a slicker brush for a cat or a dog is what you would finish up. You use this almost primarily when you're showing rabbits, but when you're um, plucking or combing for the wool, you don't really use this. This is pretty much just to fluff it up for showing them. And my two favorite combs are a shedding comb that you can see has two different rows of, of um, uh, needles <laughs> or whatever you call them. And then this is a regular comb called, usually called a greyhound comb. And so these four things are my basic equipment. And then you'll need a Ziploc bag to put, or a box to, to store your plucked wool. And rabbits, now German rabbits have to be shorn because they do not do not molt. But all the other Angora breeds need to be, you have to remove their wool every three or four months or it gets matted and they will eventually die because it's not good for them and they groom themselves and then they um, get hairballs. Okay, so the first thing I usually do is I trim the toenails. That way they can't scratch you. And all you have to do is trim the curvy tip. And if you do your rabbits, the more frequently you do them, um, of course, the less you'd have to trim. But anyway, I just trim that, the tips, so that they they're not going to be long where they would scratch me or get caught in their cage, uh, the floor of their cage, and then that would perhaps um, cause them to lose a toenail or, or at least bleed and, and be good. So anyway, that's what I do. And there are four toenails on the hind feet and five toenails, which include a dew claw on the front paws. So I'm going to just do these right now so we can get into the real nitty gritty of plucking a rabbit. Now because these rabbits do molt, um, and I can actually even feel some mats that are already on this rabbit, you need to get the wool off. And so usually what I do is I comb lightly to get any uh, hay or vegetation out. And um, then you can either comb the wool 
or actually pluck it. And when you, you just grab it and it starts coming out because this is dead hair. And there's going to be a coat underneath this coat of new wool growing. And you must get this off because, like I say, the rabbit will mat and it will collect debris. And the rabbit will try to get it off by himself and swallow a lot of it, which is very, very harmful to a rabbit because they can't digest it and they get hairballs in their stomach so they feel like they're full and they stop eating and so you just kind of gently grab it and just gently tug on it because it's dead it will come out now if now we're gonna I'm gonna show you a spot here where I got a little bald spot here. Now this is very, this is considered prime wool when you pluck or comb because if you shear you get second cuts but with plucking you don't. And you can see here where I've got a little bald spot here. It's not totally bald because this rabbit is already growing his new coat underneath. And if you, if you pluck them where they're totally bare, then you have to keep them inside or you can put a little cotton um, t-shirt on them or some sort of, or, or put a nesting box with hay in there. You have to make sure that for a couple of weeks till their new coat starts growing in, that you keep them warm. And as you can see, this rabbit is losing what looks like a pound or two. <laughs> I wish this were so simple, but um, this rabbit, uh, Angora rabbits, unless they're um, the giants, tend to be around five to eight pounds. They look much heavier because of all this fluff on them. But usually a, a, a good angora harvesting would be about three ounces of wool. Sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on the time period. Now you can see this rabbit may be a little bit uncomfortable, but he's not in pain doing this. And because I'm starting to get arthritis, I like to alternate between combing and plucking. And you can see how great these strong greyhound combs are. But like I say, my very favorite is a shedding comb here. And as I continue doing this, This rabbit will become bear. <laughs> this will be a bear bunny. You can see there. And if I keep combing this, this will not come out. This I wouldn't pluck out because this is a new growth. And this would hurt. So I wouldn't, any time that you get resistance, then you just kind of go to another area or comb in a different direction. And usually a Ziploc bag, a gallon sized bag can hold um, easily three ounces of, of rabbit wool and I always date it put uh, with a sharpie pen the date and usually the rabbit that way I know that I can um, get an idea of, of who's producing the best wool in my herd the 
but you can see that that rabbit's getting teenier and teenier. <laughs> And uh, then I use the little sh um, Fisker scissors to carefully snip out any mats. Angora wool is um, very, very soft. And it also is very, very warm because it traps the air inside um, between the hair, the very narrow hair and it, the poofiness not only is attractive and gives you that halo in your, in your garments, but it also makes it much warmer. So a lot of times you, a little goes a long way. So you can blend Angora like I often do with other wool, particularly merino because it's very soft, or cashmere, or um, um, baby camel even if you can get it. Um, because it is pricey and it's, and it's super warm. It's about eight or nine times warmer than regular sheep wool. Okay. We're beginning to see a different rabbit here. I think you can see that this is the prime wool here. And as you go down the sides or the back, um, it may be getting shorter. Some rabbits are, are more consistent than others and give you great prime wool all over their bodies. But sometimes rabbits, because they back up to their cages, tend to mat that on their back. And their, their tummy wool is shorter. And you just keep doing, you know, I find this very relaxing. As you can see, the rabbit isn't suffering any um, pain. And I'm sure he's feeling so much better getting all this hair off of him. Um, you will find that baby rabbits, um, which usually you don't, you don't um, pluck them until they're, about six, till they get their adult coat, really about six months, six to nine months. Anyway, that that is the essence of plucking a rabbit. And I wish I could be with you in person. I miss seeing you all at the Wool Festival, but it will be there next year. So come see me again next year. Hi there. <laughs> anyway, but thank you for viewing this. Uh, what I forgot to show you is this hat that I'm wearing is actually 100% uh, Angora rabbit wool. And um, it didn't come from this rabbit. It came from um, a black rabbit that I had. And anyway, you can see the halo of this. I love to make hats out of 100% Angora because what's neat about it is it is very warm, but also when you wear it, you can, you know, you don't get hat hair. Like, you know, you can wear it and it doesn't make your hair look really weird. So anyway, Angora hats are my favorite. And this is one of the products that came from one of my rabbits. <laughs>